know this feeling when you pass by a place and remember something that happened to you there. A couple of weeks ago, something similar happened to me. I was riding my bike to work and while waiting at a red traffic light in Schwabing, northern Munich, I looked at my right and it struck me. I was right next to a letterbox at the exact same spot where Sophie Scholl once had posted leaflets against the Nazi regime. Sophie who? Sophie Scholl was a German resistance fighter during the Second World War. She was a member of Die Weiße Rose, in English, the White Rose, a group initiated by students that fought the regime with words and not with violence. They produced and they were distributing leaflets all over the country by a post and also around the city of Munich by leaving them in telephone booths between the pages of telephone books. In February 1943, Sophie Scholl was distributing leaflets at the University of Munich, where she was captured and only a couple of days later killed by the scaffold. She was 21 years old. In Germany, she has become a symbol for young, peaceful and female resistance against Hitler. So there I was, right next to where this letterbox had been, and this idea really touched me. You might be wondering why this historical figure means so much to me. In fact, she's been a huge part of my life for the last two years, I'm one of the initiators of the account Ich bin Sophie Scholl. In English, I am Sophie Scholl. It's an innovative project done by the public broadcasters Südwestrundfunk and Bayerischer Rundfunk and a project I'm very proud of. It tried to communicate history through Instagram. And we wanted to combine well-researched facts with a very personal and intimate approach to Sophie. And we wanted to stay far away from the style in which you usually learn about history that's sequential and packed with information. That's, of course, factual and correct, but it can be a little bit boring. So we tried to change that. We wanted to show how thrilling history can be. Would you follow a historical Instagram account? We were not sure if our audience would. The people we tried to reach were aged between 18 and 25. So the project needed to be entertaining and engaging. Our goal was to intrigue the audience so much that it would be this project would be the starting point for finding out more about the time of the German dictatorship. About a time where people were not allowed to speak their mind or publicly raise their voice with an opinion that was against the one of the regime. We wanted young people to really ask themselves, what would I have done at that time? Would I have spoken up? The account was an experiment something that had never been done before in Germany. And we had no idea how this project with many unknown and untried variables would end up. And fortunately, it became one of the most successful social media accounts worldwide focusing on history. We had around 400,000 people visiting the account every day for 10 months. How do you begin a project like this? Being a historian myself, the answer is clear, with research. And there was a lot of historical material available for us. Sophie Scholl, she wrote a diary. She wrote many letters to her friends and family and also to her fiancé, who was a soldier at the Russian front. And to get it right, we had fact-checkers, historical experts, and fortunately the Weiße Rose Foundation on our side to support us. So 
With all this material, as our base, we created the Instagram account for Sophie Scholl, where she could tell from her perspective the last 10 months of her life. From the moment she would step on the train to Munich to study there in May 1942 till February 1943, where she was captured. And of course, like any other Instagram user, she would post photos, reels, stories. So, for example, in the morning, she would post a photo of herself having a headache, and then in the afternoon, a reel about how she's cycling with her brother Hans to a lake, skipping university. And in the afternoon or in the evening, maybe, her rants about the role of women during the time of the German dictatorship being reduced to mothers and supporters of men. Shaping this fictional version of Sophie Scholl was quite challenging, because she's a heroine. She needs to be treated with respect, right? But at the same time, we were producing something as personal as an Instagram account, so it had to be emotional, it had to be up close on her. So we had to show her intimate feelings. For example, the crush she had on Alex Schmorell, who also was a member of Die Weiße Rose. Or her daily life, like she was preparing potato soup, for example. And, to be honest, that felt a little weird at first. I mean, I mean can you imagine heroes like Nelson Mandela, or Mother Teresa going live on Instagram preparing pancakes for breakfast? Another challenge. How do you deal with the moments that are not documented? Because no normal life is written down in a way that it can be 100% reproduced on Instagram, hour by hour, day by day. So, to deal with this problem, we kept very close to the known facts, but we also made assumptions. We, we relied on the knowledge we had about what the peers were doing of Sophie at that time, and we made her do the same things. For making these assumptions and for allowing ourselves some dramaturgical freedom, we were often criticized. Some people thought that because of that we falsified historical facts which, of course, we did not. We always showed our sources, and we always distinguished between what had happened and what had not. And this point brings us to a really important question. Is it better to not reach a lot of people with content they will not consume, let alone engage with? Or is it better to reach more people with content that takes some liberties for the sake of storytelling. What would you choose? Seriously, creative interpretations of historical facts are done in the mainstream movies all the time. Why is it a bad thing if it's done on social media? We wanted to make the account look like a high-class movie. So we had about the same production value like a normal movie, meaning very professional cast, set design, lightning, cameras. And in only 16 days, we all had to produce content for 10 months, meaning around 450 feet posts and about 180 minutes of footage, so double the length of a normal movie. And all that shot in historical costumes and on original locations. So that was also quite challenging. And to round it up and to make the channel even more authentic, we also added uh, material from historical archives, like videos and photos. Then we had to learn how challenging success can be. Because we hope to have 200,000 followers at the end of the project, after the 10 months. But only after three days, we had around half a million followers. And of course, that made us extremely happy, 
but at the same time overwhelmed our community management team, because of course they were not prepared for such an amount of comments and interactions. And people loved to communicate with our version of Sophie Scholl. They, I mean, they all knew she was not alive anymore, but still, they told her where to hang out in Munich, or they congratulated her on her birthday, and shortly before her capture, they even tried to warn her, please, don't go to university today, they wrote. We wanted to know what our community wants. So we asked the audience what they wanted and what they needed. And one frequent question was, why is there no English version? So we reacted and we added a weekly recap so people from all over the world could follow Sophie Scholl's Sophie Scholl story. This means we valued our audience and we adapted to its needs throughout the time of the project. That's a total difference to um, a product like a movie or a book that it's done and that's done and complete when it's released. Ich bin Sophie Scholl was a living, a changing, and therefore a very challenging project for the entire team. Could we reach our expectations? Yes, we were blown away by the success of the channel. At the end, we had around 700,000 followers, and 70% of them were under the age of 35. So we could show that Instagram is not only a place for shiny dance videos or glossy pool images. It's a platform that can transmit really important information. The account still exists today, and it's used for educational purposes by schools, by universities, and by foundations. And this legacy of the project makes us very proud. Where does this leave us? Well, me, personally, I'm left with goosebumps every time I pass by this mailbox because of what happened right here in Munich, in Germany, only a couple of decades ago. And I do believe it's crucial to learn about the past to learn the differences between the political system that happened at that time and that the one that we're experiencing now. Now where some people wrongly do believe that they are not allowed to speak their mind or do take for granted the freedoms of our democratic system. So I hope it's not just me, but many other followers have their own personal Sophie Scholl moment. The moment that reminds them in their daily life how incredibly brave she was and how she fought without violence for something we should cherish every day, our freedom of speech. Thank you. <laughs>